Welcome to Kotlin Bytes. My name is Jacob, and in today's video, I'm going to introduce annotation processing for Kotlin. Annotation processing is a technique generally used to generate additional files before compile time using source files that are well annotated. Another use case might be validation of code. A validation example could be verifying database queries that are held within annotations. You can see this here within the library room used to access SQLite databases for Android. This topic can be extremely dense and there's no way to fit a full tutorial into one video. So instead, I intend for this to be an intro overview tutorial that will hopefully inspire you to further your research into this topic. I have provided detailed resources below. So before we jump in, I'd like to answer the question, to what extent can annotation processing help us? Here's what it can do. It can generate code, or any file for that matter, and also validate code, like I said before. However, annotation processing cannot modify existing files, and that's critical. Okay, let's jump in and build a very simple annotation processor. Okay, we're gonna start here with a new project. We're gonna make it a Griddle project and actually a multi-module project. So by default, IntelliJ IDEA doesn't set it up as a multi-module project, just a single module project. So we're gonna have to change that. Uh, yeah, so here, here we are. I'm gonna add a module actually manually I find it to be a little bit easier. So I want to create a folder called sample. That's going to be our sample app. And we're going to then create two other modules. But before we do that, we're going to first add the module level build script. And I've added a couple uh, templates here to quickly add uh, this text. I'm adding two more plugins, one for the Kotlin annotation processor and also Kotlin all open, um, just to cover all of our bases. My template requires an SDK version and SDK group, which I'm, which I'm adding to the properties file. Uh, now I can copy and paste this module twice. One's going to be called SDK and one's going to be called the SDK generator. And I'll update the group accordingly. And then finally in the settings.gradle, add all modules. Synchronize. And oh yeah, I forgot uh, to modify my root Gradle file. There we go. Synchronize it. And there we go. Now IntelliJ IDEA recognizes each one of those as a module. And now you know what? Let's actually add, let's actually add a quick hello world printout to our sample app. Awesome. Okay, it works. Now let's add a bunch of dependencies to our generator because this is where all the magic is going to happen. The first thing is to add the Kotlin Reflect library. Uh, next, the Kotlin Poet dependency. This is what's going to allow us to generate all the Kotlin files. Then finally, the Google Auto Service dependency. This will just automatically help. Uh, well, it's going to automate some of the processes for the annotation processing component. Okay, let's make our generator. Just a standard Kotlin class. It's gonna extend an abstract processor. And we'll have to implement this process function, which we'll get to a little bit later. The auto service annotation is actually an annotation from another annotation processor. This annotation helps generate some metadata that's going to be useful for our annotation processor to work correctly. Then we're going to add a supported annotation types function and we're just going to define what our annotations are that are well supported. We still have to create our annotations, so I'm going to add a to do here. Now within our SDK, the reason why we have both a generator and an SDK is because the SDK module is where you're going to place both your annotations as well as any other code that your, that your potential client app is going to use. Now here in the annotation, 
uh, we're gonna make an annotation class called my constant with a property and a value name. And we're gonna give it a target of class and field as well as a function here. And then the retention of source, which means it's only going to exist when you compile. And then finally, within our generator, we're going to reference that SDK. Then define our supported annotation type as the my constant. And we, we can get all elements that have this my constant annotation in it uh, by simply calling round environment to get elements annotated with and then pull the annotation name. And we're going to return true here. Uh, that's not too important for what we need to do today. I'd like to start off by just creating a file. It's not going to hold anything. I just want to generate a file. So uh, we're first going to define uh, the generated folder here. Uh, we're going to define a package name and a file name. And then we're going to generate a file using this file spec, which is part of a Kotlin Poet. And finally, we're going to write this file to the system. All that this process function is doing right now is capturing all items that hold the, the annotation my constant and then creating a file called my generated constants. That's all it's doing. So to test this, we're going to add this to our sample app. For the SDK, compile only. And for the SDK generator, we're going to use the column annotation processing tool. Let's create a function, add an annotation to it. For now, we'll just make the prop name high and value there. Doesn't make much of a difference. We're not going to see it yet. If we look in our generated files, we'll see that this new file has appeared called my generated constants, but it's empty. Uh, it looks like, okay, we're going to have to change our package name. We'll just add a dot there. We don't need to, but might as well. Okay, next step is to create our object. So we're gonna use an object uh, in the Kotlin sense where it's a static class essentially, or a singleton. And again, the type spec is part of uh, Kotlin Poet. We're going to just create an instance of it and then build it and attach it to our file spec. If we build this again, we'll notice that we now have this, this empty my generated constants object. Okay, finally, we're going to add the properties to this object or the constants, the constant properties. So we're going to first find each annotation within each element that has the annotation. Uh, and we're going to find, or we're just going to query for its property name and its property value. And then we need to add this property to the object, right? So I'm gonna use this property spec builder, which is provided by, again, Kotlin Poet. I wanna provide the name and then the class type. In this case, it's just gonna be of type Kotlin string. So the package name is Kotlin, the name is string, that's the class name. And I want to name him here just so it's easier for you guys to see. And finally, I want to add some modifiers. I want to make it final and also constant, immutable. And finally, I want to initialize it with, uh, well, our value, right? And I need to use, I need to wrap it in double quotes because uh, this is going to be basically written off as a string. And that's, that's how Kotlin Poet works. And I'll finally add that property to our object. 
So the way it works, we get our annotation, get the name, the value, and then we build our property with its name, the type, the modifiers, make it immutable, and then initialize it. And finally, add it to our object. If we try this, uh, it's actually not gonna work. And the reason why is because uh, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Maybe one of you can tell me in the comments, but sometimes the processor runs a couple times, and some sometimes these the, the elements with my constant variable is empty. And so w one easy way to fix this is just to filter it out. So if elements with my constant is empty, just return and skip. Okay, now if we run this again, we'll notice, hey, our, our property is there and it's final, it's constant, it's immutable and yeah, the name is high and the value is there. Because it's generated, we can now actually use it within our source code. One thing to note is that if you do change the, well, in this case, the, the property name is generated by whatever, whatever we put in the string. So if we change that value, it's going to change the property name itself, which means we won't be able to build. But once we fix it and we run it, it builds and it runs successfully. Okay, one last thing. I'd actually like this to print out that value. So we'll call that function, do something, run it, and there you go. Hello there. So this was a really quick intro into annotation processing. I hope you guys learned something. Hopefully you were inspired. Uh, just like I was, because this is this is a very powerful tool that you can utilize in your projects or just create a new library. Um, and as you can tell, just a very simple a library like this didn't really cost as much lines. It was pretty quick. Obviously, it's not organized, but uh, uh, if you look at the resources that I provided, you can you can definitely create a more organized annotation processor with error management, because uh, that's very critical, especially uh, during the debugging process that you will inevitably go through. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys next time.